here's our first equation. four x squared minus fifty two equals zero. Add the fifty two to both sides. The fifty two zero out on the left. We're left with four x squared equals fifty two. Divide both sides by four. And we'll have x squared equals 52 divided by 4. Now take the square root of both sides, put a plus or minus in front of the right hand side, and you'll have x equals plus, well, square root of 52 over the square root of 4, which is 2, doggone, we need to put that plus or minus there. Right now I'm breaking down the 52. We have to simplify our radicals, that is find the perfect square hiding in a square root radical. Find a perfect cube hiding in a, a cubic radical. But here we're dealing with perfect squares. So our answer is going to be plus or minus. All right, the twos cancel out. Therefore, x equals and that's not right. I have to take credit off on me for that. Always, always, always when you're taking the square root of both sides, put a plus or a minus. And this was called the square root method because we took the square root of both sides. Here comes another one at you, t squared plus 4t minus 21 equals 0. And I'm going to solve this by factoring. Factoring is so much quicker and easier. Negative 21 equals 7 times negative 3, and if you add the 7 and the negative 3, you get 4. That 4, right there, your B number. All right, now set each factor equal to 0. and solve each resulting little equation. And these are your two solutions. And we got these by the method of factoring. Okay. Now we're going to solve a cubic. How can we do that? Well, we're going to factor out a common factor. Y occurs in every term. That leaves us with a quadratic trinomial. That is three terms and two is the highest power.
Now I'm going to solve this by grouping the A number times the C number, 5 times negative 9 is negative 45. And negative 45 No. Well, it does equal 45 times negative 1, but that's not what I'm looking for. Let's start again. Negative 45 equals doing it again. That's going to be negative, and this is going to be positive. And I'm about to discover that. Negative 45 plus positive 1 is negative 44, and negative 44 is my B number. So here we go. That allows me to rewrite the trinomial as a four-term polynomial. Notice that negative 45 plus uh, negative 45y plus y equals negative 44y. Now we group the first two terms and we put a bracket around them because of that y out front. Now, I factor out a 5y from the first set of parentheses, and I factor out a 1 from the second set of parentheses, and then I remember my 0. You can't lose your equal zeros. So we're going to have y times 5y plus 1. That's the 5y and this is the plus 1, times y minus 9 equals 0. Set each factor equal to 0 and solve the resulting equation. Over here, in the middle, 5y equals negative 1, so y equals negative 1 fifth. And on the right, y is going to equal 9. So our three answers are going to be y equals 0, y equals negative 1 fifth, and y equals 9. And we're going to be encountering a theorem soon. The theorem says that when your highest power is 3, you're going to have 3 solutions. When your highest power is 4, you have 4 solutions. And we're about to meet that. Alright, this time we're starting with x to the 4th minus 12x squared plus 11 equals 0. Now this is a quadratic-like equation because the highest power 4 is 2 times the middle power 2. This is when we use u substitution, which gives us temporarily a quadratic trinomial we can solve. And this is very factorable. Set each factor equal to 0 and solve the resulting equation. Ah, but we're not done. Because remember, we're looking for x. 
and u equals x squared. If we take the square root of both sides, we find out that x equals positive or negative the square root of 11. And if we take, well, here on the right we're going to have x squared equals 1. We'll take the square root of both sides. And very conveniently, the square root of 1 is just 1. So we have four solutions. Our highest power is 4. And they would have been zeros if we had had y equals x to the fourth minus 12x squared plus 11. And here are our four solutions. Okay, you went over all this in intermediate algebra. Some of it you spent more time on than others, but this, this was designed to be a, a, a good review. Now we're going to solve quadratic equations by completing the square. You've also done this before, but not to the extent you're going to do it in this class.